Roche mentioned Senator Kajuang and Senator Chirarge. Mr. Speaker, let me start with the easier part. The easier part is to support this motion and to remind the House that we have a lot of work to do. And Mr. Speaker, we have a very short time to the end of the session. In the next few months, we will be hosting the East African Legislative Assembly Games here in Kenya, and we know how disruptive that is. In the next few months, we'll be having the Conference of Parties on Climate Change in Baku in Azerbaijan. In the next couple of days, a few of our colleagues will be going for the UN General Assembly. The schedule towards the end of the year is very packed. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we hope that we'll also be discussing the formula on uh, revenue allocation. And for those of us who have been here, uh, that, 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 that has been one of the most contentious issues, and, and I'm happy a majority leader corrects me that it will come in the next session. Mr. Speaker, we will be uh, talking about our appointee to the Salaries and Remuneration Co uh, uh, Commission. So there's a lot of work, Mr. Speaker, uh, not to mention Senate Mashinani, which is usually one week of serious work outside um, Nairobi. Mr. Speaker, I'm proud of the Senate that even when we were on recess, the Senate kept the nation informed on the things that are happening in dark places in this country. If it was not for this Senate and the Committee of Roads that is chaired by Senator Karungwa Thangwa and the Senator for Kisi, amongst others, this country would not have understood the problems at our airports and the issue of Adani. And Mr. Speaker, everywhere we go to, we are told that the Senate is doing a good job in keeping the government in check. I want to congratulate all those senators who have come out to speak about the excesses of those in power. During the recess, Mr. Speaker, the Senate has held to account governors, those imperial lords in our counties. When they come to the Senate, we have held them to account and put them in their place. And Mr. Speaker, I'm so happy that yesterday, when the, Sen when the cabinet sat, when the first broad-based uh, uh, government cabinet sat, one of the first things that they communicated in their resolution was the invocation of the constitutional principle where if someone makes a decision that leads to, pub to the loss of public funds, that person is held liable. And Mr. Speaker, for the first time I saw from the cabinet a statement that public officers who lead, who contribute to loss of public funds shall be surcharged and shall be held individually responsible. Mr. Speaker, even when this parliament was attacked by young people who uh, really they were not coming to attack us, were coming to have a conversation with us, it was a Senate that insisted that we must continue with our sessions. Mr. Speaker, I want to urge the House Business Committee that there are certain motions, certain bills that have been in the order paper for quite some time that we need to prioritize them so that uh, even senators can report progress. And Mr. Speaker, I want to congratulate Senator Chirarge. The other day, I saw that he is uh, one of those senators who has brought more legislative proposals and statements to this House. I believe all of us have got burning and pressing issues that can be brought to the floor of this House. Mr. Speaker, as a House, let us agree to sort out this issue of the oversight mechanisms for senators. I don't want to call it an oversight fund because it is not money that you'd call a fund. It is oversight mechanisms and arrangements or giving senators the instruments and tools that can allow them to go around and carry out their constitutional mandate. Right now, as we speak, Senator Omtata has been forced to go to court to compel a county government to produce accountability records. Mr. Speaker, we need to give ourselves teeth. No one is going to give it to us. If other parties were to have their way, they would detooth this Senate. If we donated uh, our, our powers, or if we donated the space to any other institution, they are not going to give us more. They are going to take away from the Senate. And so we must find a bipartisan way of sorting out this issue of oversight arrangements so that in between our sessions, because on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we are out there in the counties, we should be able to facilitate senators to carry out their constitutional duties. Mr. Speaker, as I finalize, because this was a procedural motion, I think this Senate is expected to have a fairly order adult conversation on issues affecting this nation. And Mr. Speaker, the issue of jobs has come up. And I, I, don't, I don't want to take a, a, a personal approach to it. And I'm glad that Senator Keroche is in this house. 
Perhaps I might not know about every other senator, but I believe that Senator Karoche is one of those who's creating jobs in this republic. Mr. Speaker, and I want to disclose this. When Senator Karoche joined this house, she talked to most of the senators. She talked to me and told me, I'm expanding my operations. Could you get me someone with certain qualifications so that I can consider them to push my organization to the next level. Very few entrepreneurs will tell you that. Very few entrepreneurs will reach out to colleagues and tell them, I am expanding, I am scaling up. If you have someone, recommend them to me. Because some people will go to their relatives and family. And those are the ones who kill industry. Senator Keroche, I'm very proud of you. And I'm very proud of what you've been able to achieve in a tough environment. But we cannot be lenient with a government that spends money on training spends money on education, and then does not spend time and money to create employment opportunities for those people. We cannot mince words. We must tell the government the truth as it is. Why can't we enable more people to be industrialists and entrepreneurs like Senator Keroche? Why should we spend money on an education system that gobbles up the bulk of our budget for us to then spend more money to go look for jobs for those people out there? Mr. Speaker, Labor, the labor market follows the rules of supply and demand. If you've got an excess supply of labor, it means that your local market, you have already satisfied the conditions, you have already satisfied the demand for the local market for you now to go to Germany to look for more jobs for your people. And yet, we are here as senators, the upper house, Mr. Speaker trying to be apologetic over a government that has failed to create jobs for our people. Whether we are exporting nuclear scientists, Mr. Speaker, whether we are exporting tech professionals, whether we are exporting lawyers, Mr. Speaker, we are in an environment where in this country you have doctors without jobs. And yet the doctor-patient ratio is not where it's supposed to be. You have a situation where you have lawyers who are tamaki. Senator Kajwang, uh What's your point of order, Senator Gloria? Mr. Speaker, I raise on a point of order on statement of fact. That is uh, standing order 105. Mr. Speaker, I have heard uh, Senator Kajwang saying that this government is not creating jobs and this government is actually not intentional on uh, solving the issue of uh, the lack of jobs, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it is open knowledge and it is in the public that we have various funds. We have the Weso Fund, we have the Women Fund, and all those funds are intentional to ensure that we create enterprises. To be able to make jobs, Mr. Speaker, we must push enterprises. We even have a new ministry of, of, of micro and Senator whatever Gloria, enterprise, Mr. Speaker. So is it, in order, is it in order for someone to stand and say that this government has made no, absolutely no, actually no intention in creating jobs when we are spending a lot of, including the Hustler Fund, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Gloria, Speaker, I th yes, I think he it, it, it should say maybe that we have done it at 50% or 30%, Senator Gloria, but not that we have not done it as a government. As you conclude, Senator Kajwang, could you also be confined to matters of facts? As you Mr. Speaker, I invite the House to peruse publicly available documents, the report of the Kenya Institute of Public Policy and Research, KIPRA, the report of the Kenya National Bureau of, of, of Statistics. The numbers are there. The unemployment ratio, the unemployment rate is there. The Federation of Kenya Employers, the rate of unemployment is there. It is not getting any better. And that is why you have now a policy of growing diaspora remittances. And Mr. Speaker, as I said, diaspora, the product that you are calling diaspora remittance is human capital. Mr. Speaker, when we went to the United States in the state of Minnesota, we found highly trained Kenyan doctors running the medical services in that country. That is how it used to be in the past. They did not go there yesterday. They went there 20 years ago. That is how it used to be in the past that we would produce doctors and export doctors. Mr. Speaker, we used to produce engineers and export engineers. Mr. Speaker, the London Metropolitan Transport System was designed and is supported by a Kenyan 
produced and educated here in Kenya, in Minnesota, the state, Mr. Speaker, the head of nursing and medical services is trained at the University of Nairobi, did his locum and internship in Kenya. That is a kind of export that we should be doing. Mr. Speaker, even when it comes to coffee, we export prime coffee, we export prime tea. That is what Kenya has been known for. That is what Kenya should be known for. And that is what our government should strive to be known for. That we are exporting professionals of the highest caliber who can bring back home skills. Skills that can drive this economy. And I am not afraid to say that someone who went to the university, it is demeaning for them to go to Qatar and be subjected to house calls, Mr. Speaker, when that person studied architecture, that person studied law, that person studied engineering. Let us not be apologetic. Let us not be embarrassed to call it what it is. But Mr. Speaker, I do not believe that Senator Oruoba, nine months from today, because she has told us there was no withdrawal, so there will be some things after nine months. Nine months from today, I do not think that that baby that she will raise and take to school that she would be happy for that child to study engineering, only for that child to become a housemaid. Let us not be mediocre. Let us not be mediocre. And let us tell the government not to treat Kenyans in a mediocre fashion. We have the capacity to be the silicon savannah. Mr. Speaker, we have the capacity to export IT labor. We have the capacity to export legal labor. The president should not be using taxpayers' your, money to go and look for to what jobs of guards and house girls. And, and, and we are not demeaning them. We are just saying that let him create those opportunities here at home. Mr. Speaker, I beg to support. Now, Senator Halwale, you definitely cannot then. Uh... I rise understanding order number 66 to, to request that since we have now become repetitive on this procedural motion, Mr. Speaker,